This is an awesome event, isn't it? Oh, man. Who had a hand up? That's not my patient, or you're not my patient. Last one. I'm not allowed to help you in this one. Ah, you know, I'd love to help you, but I'm not allowed to have any overtime. Love it. Love it. Love it. The point is we're constantly benchmarking. Your patients are not comparing you against other hospital food service departments, okay? They're comparing you against the Starbucks they went to three weeks ago that yesterday they went back and somebody remembered the name and the kind of latte double something something they drink. Yet, when I was rounding on a patient in Washington, D.C., a double amputee elderly African-American woman at 7 o'clock at night with a physician, back about 10 years ago, I walked into her room and I said, ma'am, is there anything else we can do to make your stay just a little bit nicer? She goes, well, I have been good. Can I get a slice of birthday cake with dinner tonight? D d b b birthday cake? Is today your birthday, ma'am? Do you know I turned 100 years old today? Of course we do! <laughs> Did we know it was her birthday? No, there's nothing on the electronic medical record that pops out that says it's her birthday. Of course, we jump through hoops to make it happen. We have to make sure we check with the dietitians, make sure she wasn't diabetic. Of course, we got that. But why can't we orchestrate that? See, people are expecting that because if they go to Olive Garden today for lunch, they get 20 servers standing up singing happy birthday to them, yet in the 24-day length of stay, double amputee of a national rehab hospital, we should know everything about them, and we do. But how do we operationalize that? How do we build it into the way we do our business? Hey, so what time is that 3 o'clock parade anyway? <laughs> Do, do you have three o'clock parade questions at Sharp? Uh, is this gonna hurt? <laughs> guys, we're really good at this, especially in healthcare. We're good at achievement and results. We're not so good at building relations. We don't have time anymore to say, how was your day, how was your weekend? Some of us are sailing on this ship here, and I know you're in the room, okay? You don't get anything done, and nobody likes you. <laughs> now I know you're in the room because when you walked in the room this morning the lights started to flicker we call these people and this is what they look like the hardship okay that's the boat you're sailing all right now <laughs> if we let these people stay with the organization we're going down your job is to create a specific culture that says what they're doing is graffiti Give them a culture that they can rise to. Invite everybody to board this ship. So we've got to create an appreciation environment. We've got to create an explicit culture of expectations. But are all our patients that way? Are most of our patients that way? It's not life and death most of the time. It's everyday life. It's a sore throat. It's an earache. It's a lump that I'm really unsure of. Do your people know what your role in the healing experience is? So one of the things that we talked about is, what's your role in the healing experience as a housekeeper? Now, the hardest thing, and then let me do a couple disclaimers. I know you're not running, you personally are not running a medical center. You're not running an, a sterilized processing unit. Maybe you used to, maybe you were a nurse. How many um, previous or current clinicians do we have in the room here? MD, RN, provider, uh, X, great. Okay, it's good to know. It's a little intimidating, but it's good to know. <laughs> Watch my P's and Q's. Uh, how many physicians do we have in the room, just out of curiosity? Excellent. Let's talk about them. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. Just scared to raise your hand, wasn't it? There we go. All right. Okay. We've got our token physician. Good. Are you delivering on the promise? Does that promise you can count on us mean anything to you? If your employees don't know specifically how to answer the phone, how many rings to answer the phone, how to transfer a call, how to do an intake, how many knocks to knock on someone's house, to use a doorbell, do you say hello to the pet, do you not say hello to the pet, what part of the driveway do you drive on, do you park out in the street, do you call ahead when you're running late, or you just roll the dice that they're not going to be upset? If they don't know the answers to all of those questions, you've got chaos in this body. The question behind the question is, when somebody says, do you work here, what do they really mean? 
can you help me? When they ask what time the three o'clock parade is, what they really mean is, what time will it be right Read here? Read about it as you watch the wife and the kids going, Dad is a loser in 3D. <laughs> they all elbow each other. The wife, usually, usually the loser term follows with a roll of the eyes, right? I know, I've seen my wife do it. The point of the matter is, is there's three ways to answer that. Duh, three o'clock. The second level that we learn over, over years from our coaches and our trainers is, you know what, a lot of people don't know this, but if you sit right over there by that trash can a full hour before the parade, every picture you take of the floats coming down Main Street will have the castle in the background. You'll thank me later. Oh, thank you so much. Could have just said 3 o'clock. Okay. Oh, by the way, it won't be here until 3.45, but you want to get there at 2.30. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Level 3 is where we go to wow. So he devised a brilliant plan that I want to give you to leave tonight and think about as you drive home. He sent one of his sons out in the woods on an errand. He brought his other son into his teepee and he gave him the bad news. Son, I'm sorry, I'm dying any time now. I have a quick question for you. Inside my hand is a bird. Simple question, is it alive or dead? The son said, wow, it's, it's dead. It's definitely dead, Dad. It's dead as a doornail. Father opened his hands. The bird flew away. Thanks for playing, son. Go get your brother. Second brother came in, sat just where the other brother did, asked him the same question. Son, I'm dying. I'm sorry. I'm going to be leaving you soon, but I have a simple question. Inside my hand is a bird. Is it alive or is it dead? This son took a little bit longer to answer. He looked in his father's eyes, looked at his father's hands, looked back at his father's eyes, and he said, well, I guess it depends on you, father. For if I say that bird is dead, you'll open your hands and that bird will fly away. If I say that bird is alive, you will crush your hands and kill that bird. I guess the life of that bird, Father, is in your hands. It is what you make it. We've created the commitment to service. We've given you service priorities, hopefully as a decision-making tool. You could just discount it and say, that's corporate trying to shove something else down our throat from the grove. Or you can try to localize it. Either way, the role of the provider you are the captain of the ship. What you do matters. They're not going to listen to what you say as much. Watch what you do. But the bird is in your hands. It is what you make it. Thank you very much.